In this video, I'm gonna talk about slabs and soil. Truly, how does the soil impact your concrete slab? My name is Tyler Lay. I'm a concrete maniac. I live, breathe, sleep, dream concrete so I can help you, my concrete crazies. Please, if you've got a slab question, leave it below. Leave a soil question below as well if I don't cover it in this video. And while you're there, like, subscribe, and yeah, be awesome, right? So we're talking about concrete slabs today and soil that's underneath them. Yeah, there's the concrete and there is the soil. Soil is also sometimes called base, sometimes called sub-base. Base is probably a better name for it. If I have a load that is on top of that concrete slab, that might be a tire, that might be something else heavy, that load will transfer itself down and be supported by the soil or slab underneath. So a lot of people might think, oh, so it really, really is important about the type of soil on how thick or what type of concrete you use, et cetera. We're gonna talk about that today. And this is the reaction that's in the soil. So the load really spreads, either goes out or goes in, depending on the stiffness of the soil that's being used. So stiffness is the load divided by the deflection. That is the mathematical way to describe stiffness. But, but there are other ways as well, like stiffness is also equal to how squishy something is. Yes, squishy. So we would say this concrete block here on the left has a very high stiffness or it's not very squishy and something that's like jello on the right would have a low stiffness or something that is extremely squishy. I know you got it now. So stiffness of soil is usually called K for engineering terms and this K has a special name. We got our names for this stuff and they're not always good. Like for example, this one is the modulus of subgrade reaction. I don't know why they called it that. I would just call it the stiffness of the soil, but yeah, that's what they call it. So if I have a very high K, then when my load is placed on top, my load is concentrated in one area. If I have a very low K, then as my load's placed on top, my load is distributed in my soil over a much wider area. So I know you're asking, which one is better? Just tell me which one's better. Well, this graph tries to explain it. And on the x-axis of the graph is the sub subgrade reaction or that K value. That's how stiff your soil is. And then on the y-axis is how long will it last compared to something called medium sand. And we'll talk about and define what that is today. Well, if I have quick sand, that would be down there. That means it has no stiffness. That's not very good for the life of my pavement or my slab. Oh, no, no quick sand. Ah! And, and then um, if I have loose or fine sand, you might know it as beach sand, looks something like that. That is where it would fall in the category. This is where we call something called medium sand. And if you don't know what that is, that's just sand with some larger particles in it. Yeah, it looks more like this. Concrete sand is an example of that. And then there is road base that is sand that is surrounded by a bunch of larger rocks, stiffer rocks, and it usually falls there. Now in summary, I've gone from beach sand to medium sand to road base, and as you can see here, there is not a large difference between any one of these points, about 10% or so difference, as in there's not a big benefit to the life of your, of your pavement or your slab by just using one sand choice over another, soil choice over another. So there's not a large difference between most soils when it comes to performance. But what does make a difference is the uniformity of the soil. Massive, big, importante difference. So if I have a big old boulder surrounded by my soil, like a hard spot like this, so when I go to load it up, there is gonna be a massive a bunch of load there or stress there that will dig into my pavement or my slab and it will cause problems and it will cause a crack and nobody likes that. That, that is not good at all. Yeah, no crack. And then if I have a void that is the opposite of a hard spot, a, a hollow spot or a no stiffness spot, then my load has to bridge over that spot. And that is gonna put, again, stresses in my slab and cause a crack. No crack.
So the uniformity of your stiffness is important. One would argue the most important thing when it comes to the soil of your slab. So you don't want hard spots, you don't want soft spots or empty spots, and it's kind of like the princess and the pea, right? This is the Hans Christian Andersen um, uh, fairy tale, right, where they stack up mattresses on the very top, and, this, and the princess is so sensitive, she can sense the pea underneath. You know what I'm talking about, right? The non-uniform stiffness, that is just like our slabs, right? They're like princesses. They don't like these non-uniform stiffnesses, right? And that's one reason why we compact our soil. We want to make it uniform stiffness and get rid of the hard spots and the soft spots and make it uniform. But stiffnesses issues are magnified, a big deal, especially near the corner and near the edge of a slab, because if I load it there, there's just not a lot of places for that load to go. It's got to go through the concrete into the soil, and so you see higher loads there. So any in anything that happens in this region is magnified and it's super important. Slabs also do something called curling as they dry. So as the sun starts to beat down, the top will dry more than the bottom and it will cause it to shrink just at the top or shrink more at the top compared to the bottom. And that causes the slabs to lift up. And yes, this happens in real life. And when that edge is loaded, it will cause, no, a crack. So there's an edge crack there. That is not good. Not good at all. So what else is important out there when it comes to soils? Well, you want soils that are drainable. You want soils that don't settle very much. You want soils that don't erode and you don't want them to shrink and you don't want them to swell. And because of all of these reasons, we could do a video on each one of them out there, but because of all of these reasons, people often choose something like crushed rock or recycled concrete. They usually put between four and six inches of it down. You don't have to use that much, but that's pretty common. And again, this is an amazing, awesome place to use recycled concrete. This is old concrete that's been crushed and beaten up. Use it as road base, use it as base for some reason. Amazing, amazing use for it. Yeah, it may look something like this. As long as it drains, the fines in it are not a problem. Some people prefer to use a single size aggregate. You don't have to, right? You can have some fines in it as long as it will drain. These bases are also amazing during construction. What do I mean by that? Once you get them prepped, once you get them going, you don't have to worry about them eroding, you don't have to worry about them washing out or having any other problems, and that's, again, why they are so preferred in practice. So in summary, the soil type is not as important, but the uniformity of the soil, that is big time, especially at the edges and corners. Provide soil that um, with a way to drain and have minimal settlement, and this is one reason why people often pick crushed rock or recycled concrete, amazing great choice for you. Hey, I hope you dug this video. If you did, please give me a like, a subscribe, and a comment. I love reading your comments. And check me out at Facebook and Instagram. Take care, everybody. Bye.